two videos ago, we have implemented simple authorization policies where we're simply checking the existence of a claim or uh, specific values of claim. In this video, we are going to implement some more uh, complicated scenarios where we're checking some custom logic uh, other than just checking the presence of a claim or the specific value of the claim. So let's imagine a scenario where uh, you are hired as uh, a human resource manager and you can access, of course, you can access human resource manager page, uh, whereas the permission is only given when you pass your probation period, right? So for example, you have a three months probation period and within the three months, although you're given uh, the main claim and uh, HR department claim, you still haven't passed your probation period, you won't be able to access the, the page, right? So that's going to be a, a custom requirement, which we're going to implement. And then we have to implement the authorization handler to help us to handle the requirement. And then in the handler, we can say whether the security context satisfies the requirement or not. Okay, so let's jump into Visual Studio and get started right away. So first of all, let's go into our login page, right? So here we will need some extra claims here. We need to have a claim which contains the employment date uh, of the person who is logged in, right? So, so the employment date, let's say the employment date is May 1st, 2021. So 2021 0501. So this is May 1st. So we added this claim. The next step, we need to create a requirement, which we will create it under the authorization folder. So let's create a authorization folder, which will contain all of our uh, custom requirement, right? If we have many, in this case, we only have one, um, but we'll still have it in the folder. So we'll create a class, right? And we're gonna call the class uh, HR manager, probation requirement that sounds like a meaningful name and for any requirement we'll have to derive that requirement from i authorization requirement interface right i authorization requirement interface this interface doesn't have anything in it if we go to the definition right we can see it's empty uh, so the reason why we need it I'll explain you why we need this uh, interface a little bit later. So in here, we're going to have the probation uh, period passed in, right? So probation, let's say probation month. Uh, I'm gonna do control dot to initialize it as a public property, right? So we have this public property here. Uh, and then inside the namespace, we're gonna create the handler right here. Right, so we're going to have a public class, uh, which will have this name. So, so it's not requirement, it's requirement. Right, so we'll have to change the name of the file as well. So I'm going to copy this uh, name and then I'm just going to call it uh, HR Manager Probation Requirement Handler. And this will have to derive from the authorization handler class and here you can see we have a t requirement and this t requirement is a i authorization requirement right so that's why we need this i authorization requirement here right although this is an empty interface we just need it so that we can have this handler uh, implemented properly right so i put in this uh, requirement here and then you can see the the red squiggly line here I'm just, I'm just going to do control dot to implement abstract class right so I hit enter so we'll have a, a virtual method overridden here and we can we can see that this requirement is passed in through this method right so we can implement this method basically here we just need to get the employment date and then to see whether we have passed the probation period so how do we get the uh, claim so we can check in the context 
in here we can access the user which uh, which is the claims principle right and then it has has claim a method here and we can say is there a claim whose type is employment date it's better we use a constant for this name but uh, for demonstration purpose we're not going to do that so uh, we can use the if condition statement here right so if it doesn't exist and this is when we need to say we don't we don't say we fail right? we don't need to we just need to basically return an empty task here the reason why we don't want to uh, say it fails is that if it fails then the policy will fail no matter what but in some cases we we'll want to have multiple requirement within the policy so if one of them satisfies then it's okay right we don't want to return just a, a failure like that so after this line we know that we have a employment date claim so we just need to get the the date here right so we can use daytime dot parse to parse the the claim so we use the claim principle to find our first um, our first employment date claim and we know we have it so we're pretty sure we have it so then we can just access the value and then we parse that so now we have the employment date uh, and we just need to compare the the differences right so the preparation period right the preparation period is daytime now uh, my minus employment date okay so we course basically we're just going to say if the period that dot days right so this if you hover over you can see this is a time span object so if the period dot days is greater than 30 times uh, requirement right we have our preparation period preparation month here so we can say requirement dot preparation month right because this requirement is passing from here from this parameter so we can just use that and then here we're going to say text.succeed so we're going to call the succeed method and then we want to make this particular requirement succeed okay right? and then after that we still return an empty task like that so now that we have the requirement and the handler we will need to go to the startup class to register I'm going to do control comma and start up we need to go to startup.cs and then we'll change this hr manager policy a little bit we'll need to add something here we're going to add requirements to this policy right so this is a requirement which is requiring the claim and this is also a claim requirement and this is a customer requirement and we just say dot requirements dot add we're going to add this uh i authorization requirement right which we already have implemented and from here we can pass in the permission period right you can keep it in the settings in the app settings if we want but in this case for demonstration purpose i'm going to hard code here so three months of permission period and then we are going to do a control dot to import the namespace we also need to uh, dependency inject this particular requirements handler and for that we can just add the handler to the service collection right and in this case we can use singleton or we can use transit or scope it doesn't really matter uh, but using singleton will improve the performance just a little bit because it does not need to recreate the class all the time right so i'm going to do a control dot to, to import namespace here and also the requirement handler that's it we have this requirement and this is already on our hr manager page right we don't have a hr manager page menu so let's just quickly add that and that is in our layout page so let's just add another list item of our hr manager page here okay again coming back to this diagram just so that we know exactly what's happening so if we're trying to access this hr manager page right the authorization uh, middleware 
will grab the policy name, and then it will go through all of the requirements and find their handlers, right? Because we have this handler specified to handle that specific event where we specified right here, right? So this handler is, is kind of bound to this requirement. Right? So we have this handler to handle the specific, sorry, not event, the specific requirement, right? Therefore, our requirement handler will determine whether the security context will actually satisfy the requirements, right? So this is the theory. And then we have already implemented, so let's give it that a try. I'm gonna do a control F5 to run the application. All right, I'm gonna log in as the admin, and then I'm accessing the next page. Uh, well, I'm gonna change the privacy, gonna change the label here in the layout. So this is not privacy, this is HR management. Coming back, refresh the page. All right, so let's click on the HR management. Access denied. Why is access denied? Right, so we can see that our requirement actually has a 30, a three months configuration here, right? And in the login, in the claim, uh, the employment date is May 1st, right? So that's from May 1st to today's date, which is May 15th, right? So it's not going to work. So if we set it to February 1st, then that's way past three months. So that should work, right? So let's give that a try. I'm gonna do Control Shift B. All right, build succeeded. So let's first log out to kill the cookie because the cookie still contains May 1st as the employment day. So let's do the log out to kill the cookie. And then we're gonna log in again. So now the cookie is supposed to contain February 1st as the employment date. And if we go to the HR management page, we can see the HR manager page, right? So that is for this video where we have implemented this uh, custom requirement and the custom requirement handler, right? So you can have pretty complicated requirement and then all you have to do is just implement this authorization handler to handle the specific requirement. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. If not, I'll see you in the next video.